Hey fellow garage golfers, Roland here with Garage Golf, back in my comfy Crocs once again for another video for you guys. And as you see here, I got a new projector that we're gonna be putting into the studio. This one I'm super pumped about because I actually had a hand in helping to create this projector in a very, very small way. Uh, they basically asked us as influencers what we would like to see in a projector that's meant for a golf simulator and a home theater setup. And I think I got a real winner for you guys here. I'm looking forward to sharing that with you. And that's coming at you right now. All right, thanks again for watching and welcome back. Here at Garage Golf, we provide information on golf products, golf equipment, golf simulators, golf projectors, and pretty much anything golf related. So if you're new to our channel, make sure to subscribe and click the bell notification so you can receive more videos like the one that we're coming out with today. Also, make sure to check our video description. We put all the links for every product that we have here in our golf simulator, as well as some of the products that we recommend for you at home. Some of these are affiliate links. It does help out our channel if you use them, but please make sure to check them out at no additional cost to you as well. And it does help out our channel a little bit if you do use any of our links, so we really appreciate that. Let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so I got a little cheat sheet with me here just so I can make sure I give you all the accurate info at home. What we're gonna be checking out today is the BenQ LK936ST laser projector. This is gonna be a 4K projector. This is actually a higher end projector meant for not only golf simulation, but it has a pure golf simulation mode that we're gonna show you, but also for home theater as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox this really quick for you. I would like to show you the actual projector. It's a little bit smaller than some of the others that we've tested out here on the channel. It is again a laser projector, so that's going to mean long lasting life. 4K projector, we have things like digital shrink, four corner corrections, a whole bunch of stuff. But let's go ahead and show you some of the actual footage of the projector itself. Let me get it unboxed, let me put it here on the table. I'll show you it up close, all the ports we're looking at, and then we'll dive into the projector a bit more in detail. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this projector from the front overall. And again, this is a little bit smaller than some of the others we've tested here on the channel. Uh, but this is a BenQ 4K projector. You see the 4K HDR right there on the front. And there you see the actual lens and it does have a manual focus and it does have a zoom on it as well. And taking a look at the actual size from above, you can kind of get an idea of the total size. This is a normal TV tray here. And then here we'll take a, We'll take a look at the back here in just a second as well. All right, now taking a look at the actual unit from behind, you're gonna see two HDMI setups. This is going to be HDCP 2.2. You have an HD base T connection. You have an SPDIF connection. You're going to have a USB connection. You have a remote in and out. You have a display port, which is awesome if you have a computer with a display port in and out. You can directly connect your display port here to this projector, which is a nice upgrade, I feel. We have the 3D VESA in, you have the RS-232, um, we have a LAN input, and we have audio output, and we have a 3D VESA out, as well as a 12-volt trigger. So some of these are above my head as far as total technology turns, but it's nice you have a bunch of options. To me, the most important ones that I like a lot are going to be that display port, because I think that's really, really cool for having it set up um, with a actual computer. And then the SPDIF is also a nice feature, but you have two HDMI um, inputs as well. So that way you basically have options to connect two different items and a computer as well to it. So you have, you're looking at three total that you can have set up with this projector. And that's without even using a splitter or anything. So that's also really, really nice feature. Then down here you have your actual audio connection or your actual power connection, excuse me. And this is gonna be what you plug in directly into your wall outlet. So really, really nice setup, lots of ports, lots of different options. And here I'll come back and I'll walk you through a few of the more technical items as well. And some of the things that really excite me about this projector. All right, and here you see the front right side of the actual projector as well. You have your menu items. If you didn't have your remote, this is where you can access all the items as well here. And you're gonna have your dust guard as well. So this helps keep a lot of dust out from the unit. So if you're in a setup like mine, which say it's a garage, 
Uh, even though I keep it very clean here, there's still excess dust because it is a garage. So this is gonna be a nice feature that's gonna help protect your projector and your investment as well. All right, I'm moving along to the front left side of the projector. Here you see the fans and you see the vents as well. This is gonna help keep your actual projector cool and from overheating in your setup, which is a nice feature. And then here on the top, there's a little port that pops open that you see here. This is gonna be your lens shift. So this also has not only a vertical lens shift that you'll find a lot in projectors, but a horizontal lens shift as well. And what that basically means for you is that you don't have to mount this directly behind your screen where you're standing. You could actually mount it a little bit to the side. It's gonna allow you to adjust the actual image left and right on your actual golf simulator screen or your home theater screen. And it's gonna make a world of difference for you in being able to set up your setup exactly the way you need it, especially if using it with a golf simulator as well. All right, and here you see the projector mounted upside down. This is gonna be how you would obviously mount it if you're mounting it from the ceiling. And you see you have four spots here that you would connect your projector mount to all together. And most projector mounts should work with actually setting up with this type of projector. I've used a few different ones from Amazon. Uh, if you check my link, I should have some in there for you to take a look at that I've used previously before in my setup as well. And here you're gonna actually see there is your center line of the lens. So when you're actually mounting it, you'll know exactly where your center line is. But again, with a projector like this, having the horizontal offset is gonna be really cool because you don't necessarily have to mount it directly in the center of your screen, which is definitely a nice feature when using with a golf simulator also. All right, so we got the item unboxed now and you see it here. Uh, let's go over that spec sheet really, really quickly with you guys because I would like to share all the key points that I feel is going to be one of the best options out there for not only your golf simulator needs, but actually your home theater needs as well. So this is considered to be an all-in-one home theater and golf simulation ready device, which is really nice. It does feature some things that, if you watched my channel before, I currently am using the BenQ LK953 ST projector, which was a 4K laser projector. Now there were some drawbacks with that projector that this projector corrects. I'm gonna go over a few of those with you. Number one, we have a 3D keystoning and corner fitting for ideal projector alignment. The LK953 ST did not have that, so I had to use actually a third party software that allowed me to kind of manipulate and, and warp my image to fit onto my screen. Well, that's gone now. I don't have to deal with that anymore with this new projector. That's one of the really nice features that this one has. So not only do we have the vertical and horizontal lens shift, but we also have the actual corner adjustments. And I'm gonna walk you through how to set all that up once we get this mounted here as well. We have uh, the digital shrink without any kind of distortion whatsoever. So you also have a digital shrink that will shrink the entire image at one time if you don't need to do corner by corner as well. The S slash PDIF port that I showed you on the video, that's gonna allow for 5.1 audio, uh, digital or surround audio with your actual projector. Um, so before on the other projectors, it would have the red and white audio cords. Now you have that port, which is gonna be able to connect to a lot of different devices such as sound bars or any other devices that you may have for audio at home. Your dynamic contrast ratio is gonna be three million to one on this device. This is actually a device that would be set up because it is a laser device. If you're running a business, golf simulator business, home theater business, anything like that, this is going to be an ideal device for that because you're not gonna to have to worry about running it for too long and it overheating. So if you're looking for some kind of setup like that, this is right up your alley as well. Maximum resolution on this device is gonna be 4K, which is 3840 by 2160. That's actually what's on my monitor, so it's gonna work perfectly with this setup as well. That's going to feature 8.3 million distinct pixels. So we're gonna take a look at the quality of the picture and see how that's going to look. I'm gonna show, show you side by side with the golf mode that they're gonna have. Now what the golf mode does is it basically is a picture mode that they've set up. They've tested multiple golf simulator products and different programs out there to help come up with the best picture image. It's gonna make the bluer images even more blue and the greener images greener. So we were looking at obviously the grass on the setup as well as the skies. And I'm gonna look really forward to testing that out side by side with a normal picture setup and seeing if we can see the difference at home. Throw ratio is really big for a lot of people. We're looking at a 0 0.8 throw ratio all the way to one time 1.1 zoom on the throw ratio. There's a 1.1 manual zoom as well as a manual focus. You can focus it directly from the device itself. 
Um, one of the actual really cool features, again, we talked about the lens shift, you can adjust it 23% horizontally and 60% vertically where you go up or down within 60% of that total whole spear that you're working with. So that's really nice. The throw distance would put you anywhere between two feet to 17.7 feet. And I'm gonna put a link for all this in the video description. This is just going over some of the technical things for you. Throw ratio 0.81 all the way to 0.89. And that's very similar to my LK953 ST that I have now. But again, this one has the corner adjustments and different things as well. Total device weight is 15.4 pounds. Again, it's a little bit smaller than some of the others uh, that I tested, at least it, it looks and feels that way to me. So it's nice, it's a little bit lighter and easier to kind of work with. And I'll have to deal with that right now when we get ready to mount this unit as well. And the lamp type is going to be a laser. So that's going to be set up for 20,000 hours. That's a long time, it's gonna last a long time and 30,000 hours if you're on eco mode. There's also a digital zoom feature as well that you can adjust manually with your remote. 5,100 lumens, that's a big one when we're talking with golf simulators. So we want something that's gonna be most likely at least 3,500 on up. The more lumens you have, the more brighter the image. So this one actually comes with 5,100 lumens. That's gonna make a big difference, not only for golf simulators, but for home theaters as well. Resolution again, it can go up to 4K, which is gonna be 3840 times 2160, and that's the number of pixels we're talking about. Aspect ratio native is gonna be 16.9 aspect ratio. Now for those of you looking for a 16.10 ratio, it does do WQXGA resolution. That's gonna give you a 2560 by 1600 image. That will generate four million pixels. That's gonna be double the amount of pixels that you would get from a normal WUXGA resolution. So we're looking forward to testing out the image there as well. Lastly, street price, and again, I want you to obviously remember that this is going to be a higher end projector meant for not only golf simulators, but home theaters as well. And for those people looking for the ultimate golf simulator projector also. So we're looking at a street price of $44.99 total. And again, when you get all these bells and whistles and the different things involved, you obviously are going to have a little bit higher price tag to go with it. But we're gonna test this unit out. We're gonna be using this unit in the channel moving forward from now on. So if you have any questions for me, let me know. I wanna be your go-to person to answer any questions that you have. I am looking forward to testing this unit out. I don't know if this will be my full-time projector moving forward or if I'll move back to the LK953, but I'm looking forward to testing this out. And there's a lot of cool features like the four corner adjustments and all the digital corrections that I can do. I don't have to deal with the third party software. So let's go ahead and get this mounted. Let's get it up. I'll walk you through some of the features. We'll set it up here in the simulator. So I'll show you how to set up every little detail and then we'll take a look and see what that image looks like. All right, so we're back. And first of all, excuse the mess here. I'm in the middle of some renovations here in the actual studio. Uh, but I wanted to kind of share with you, since you last saw me on video, it's been probably three days or so. Um, I did have some issues with mounting the projector. And what I ended up finding out, something for you at home in case you do look into this projector, um, is that my other projector mount did not work. Most projector mounts will work if you have a diagonal space between the corners of 12 and a half inches or less. This one measured out a little bit longer, probably somewhere closer to 13 to 13 and a quarter. So I had to make some minor modifications to my mount, uh, but we did get it to work. It took me a couple days to get everything set up. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you it set up here now in the studio, and then we'll turn it on. I'll show you how it's gonna be basically brand new, straight out of the box, and then how we're gonna adjust that image to make it work here for my setup. Let me go ahead and show you it mounted, and we'll go from there. All right, here we have a huge carpet that's rolled out, or rolled up here in the studio. This is gonna be part of the renovation coming up soon. Keep an eye out for that. Got my ladder up here, and here we have the projector. We're looking at the one here on the left, not the one on the right, but this is the BenQ LK936ST that we just got. And I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you from the side profile as well, just so you can see. Pretty small little projector overall, and um, only have the one HDMI plugged in right now to it, and that's all I have set up for now, but it's gonna work. And uh, I will show you guys it on the screen here in just a moment. But like I said, if you have a mount, make sure that diagonally for the corners, it will basically cover at least 13 and a half inches. I think that'll be ideal. So that way you don't have any issues trying to mount this projector. All right, so let's go ahead and put the camera back on the stand. I'll show you the projector turned on, ready to go. And then we'll show you how we can modify that image to make it work for our setup. Okay, so what you see right now behind me is a test screen for the projector. And what I've done, all I've done so far 
is on the actual front of the projector where the lens is, there's actually two ways you can adjust the lens. Number one is you can adjust it where you sharpen the image or basically you get it from being blurry to clear, which I've done already. So we tested that out. The other thing you do is you actually can turn the lens and that will actually zoom in or shrink down the image based upon how far you have it from your setup. So what I did was I made it as small as possible because where my image was, it was actually making my actual image on the screen too big where it was showing up on the floor and on the ceiling above it. So what I did was I made it as small as possible. Now, there's still some image on the floor. There's some image on the curtains on the side that you see here on, the, on your right side of the screen. And then it's actually up top on the baffles as well. You don't see that because the camera cuts it off. But what I'm gonna do now is take you through the menu system and show you how I'm gonna fix that based upon my setup. So as long as you have it somewhere mounted, and again, you're gonna to wanna to test out your actual mounting as far as how far you want to mount it from your screen based upon your individual setup at home. And for that, I, I recommend a website called projectorcentral.com. They actually have a free calculator that will show you if it's ceiling mounted for your specific projector that you're interested in, how far to mount it from the screen. So I kind of already had an idea. Mine's probably mounted about 14 to 15 feet based upon my setup here. So let's go through the menu system. I'll go ahead and get off screen. I'll sit right here behind the camera. I'm gonna adjust the menu for you. And I'm gonna show you how we're gonna fix that image to make it look nice and clear at home for you. All right, so let's say this is the very first time you've ever set up a projector. And this is the BenQ again, LK936ST. And let's say you're interested in this projector and you're setting it up for the very first time. There's a couple things that I will share with you that I think will help save you a lot of time and frustration. Just because I've gone through this in the past with several other projectors and I kind of know some of, the, some of the flaws that you can come across when you're going through this process that will help save some time and energy if we can bypass those. So the very first thing you would do if you were setting this up for the first time is you would go here to installation and you would select projector position. Now, if you have it ceiling mounted and it's in front of your screen, in other words, behind where you're gonna be hitting from either the golf position or if you're watching movies or anything at home, you're gonna to wanna to set it to front ceiling. That'll adjust the image. So when you first turn it on, it may be upside down. You might just have to look for it and kind of turn your head a bit, but this is where you're gonna find it and this is how you'll set it. Now, of course, if you have it on a stand behind you or something like that, then you'll wanna pick whatever option works best for you. But this basically flips the image and allows you to go through everything from there. Um, the very next thing that I would do as well is I would go to display and if you check here, you can actually select the aspect ratio. So you'll see that this projector has 16 by nine, 16 by 10, it has 2.4 by one and a four by three. So there's a lot of options. So the very first thing I did was I put it in 16 by 10 mode and I wanted to test it. Well then when I went and uh, pulled my computer up and I actually dragged my screen to where my actual projector screen is, uh, it didn't match up. It, it wasn't the same as when I was doing my test pattern. So the thing I suggest, honestly, and I, that could be a setting I can adjust on my computer as well, most likely, but I just I would suggest you use auto aspect ratio in this particular case. It saved me a lot of time and energy, and once I set it up with auto, and I actually dragged it over from my computer, it worked perfectly. So that's how I did mine, personally. Uh, if you have another route, then that's obviously something that you can decide, but that's just a little tip from me um, as far as setting this up here. All right, so now let's go back to installation. The very first thing I wanna do is pull up that test pattern. So under installation, I pull up test pattern and I'm gonna click on turn it on. So we're basically good to go. Now, we have an image that's too wide for our screen and too tall for our screen right now. So the very first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna go to installation and go down to image resizing. We're gonna click okay. And we're gonna pull up digital shrink and shift. This particular projector not only has digital shrink, but it has corner adjustment. So this is gonna make it super easy for us to fix this image to make it work with our screen without using any third-party software, which is great. So the first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna pull up digital shrink and shift. And I, with using the arrows on the remote, you can click left or right. And you're gonna to start to see this image shrink down. Now, what we're gonna find is that the image will actually fit you know, lengthwise, top and bottom, before it's gonna fit corner-wise. So what we're gonna do and I think right there is the very first time that I can see the image on the top and the bottom without it hitting my baffles on the top, which again, you don't see at home. Uh, but this is gonna be basically as close as I'm gonna get it on the top and the bottom and still allow me some room to adjust the image as well. So I'm good with digital shrink now. I'm gonna hit back. So that basically shrunk the whole image down 
to the size of my screen vertically that I needed it to be. Now it still sticks out a little bit on the side, so that's where we're gonna go and use the actual corner adjustment feature. So we're gonna go ahead and click on back now, and we'll go down to corner fit. And what I'm gonna do now is adjust, you can adjust each corner individually to where you want it, not only vertically, but horizontally. So there's gonna be some adjustments that we can do. So if you're looking at the image and you look at the black part of the screen on the right, that's where my side curtain is. We're gonna go ahead and go in there and adjust that upper right hand corner first. And now you'll see a blue line. So you'll kind of be able to see it a little bit better as to where the image is not on the actual screen itself. So upper right hand corner, you're gonna see zero and zero. I'm gonna be able to hit left to bring that image further left now. So I'm gonna go ahead and hold it down and I may have to take it all the way to the maximum, which it's going to be 60 that I'll be able to take it to. And I think we might see it peek out a bit. And if I don't, I can adjust it more from there if needed. All right, so that's good there. And I'm gonna go down to menu. I'm gonna go back to corner fit without backing out this time, hopefully. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring that image on the bottom right now and I click okay. And I can drag that image as well all the way to the left. So I'm gonna use that to 60 here. And you're gonna start to see that blue line creep up on the screen a bit. And we, there's still some more adjustments we can do from there. All right, so we're good on the right side now. Now I'm going to click the back button. I'll go to that bottom right-hand corner. So now you'll see that, um, and what we have is a little bit of keystoning issue as well, and you can adjust, you can turn on automatic keystoning. I, keystoning is always kind of a difficult task for me and it doesn't seem like I have too much of an issue with it, so I'm not gonna really adjust it too, too much. But what I'm gonna do here is bring that bottom left-hand corner in by using that corner adjustment just to where I could fit it kind of on the screen. Okay, and I think we're good right about there. All right, so we have an image that's pretty much shrunk down and it fits our screen pretty well now, but there's still a few more things that we can do to kind of adjust that a little bit from here. Now, one of the things that I could do is because the right side of my screen, I already have it maxed out with my corner adjustment, is I could actually get up to my projector and just basically move it by hand. But this projector specifically has a pretty cool feature that I'd like to show you. I'm gonna go back to the menu, and if I go back into image resizing where we were before, and I do digital shrink and shift, and I select it. All right, so now we've already shrank the image to where we want it, which is this time is at 0 0.895 magnification. What I wanna do is click OK. If you see on the bottom right, on, on the bottom part of the menu, it says OK to shift the image. So if I hit OK, now I can actually use what's called digital image shift here with the projector, and I can actually remotely shift the image over. So I'm gonna move my image from the right part of my screen a little bit to the left side of my screen here. So let's check this out now. So now I'm basically moving that image over. So now you see pretty much the entire white line on the right side and we're seeing the, the line on the actual left side go onto the black screen over there. So I think we got it pretty nice on the right side because I was able to shift that image. Now check what we can do here from here. So now I got that set up the way I want it. I hit back. I'm gonna go back to my menu. I'm gonna go back to corner fit again. And I'm gonna be able to fix that bottom left corner now, which is the only one that's not on my screen the right way by selecting it. And I'm gonna drag it a little bit further to the right now. Okay, so we're good there. So I got one more little tweak to do. I'm gonna go ahead and shift that image back one more time to the right and see if we can get this thing perfect here. Let's go back into image resizing. Go to digital shrink and shift. I'm gonna click okay to shift the image and let's drag it. And that's pretty decent right there. And we pretty much see that white line right about there. I think that's perfect. That's gonna be pretty much as close as I can get this image now um, to fit my screen. And I think that looks pretty darn good if you ask me. Well, let me know your thoughts at home. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you back here and I'm gonna show you uh, what it's gonna look like with the actual image on the screen now from my computer and we'll see what you think. All right, so here I am back in the studio again and here you see the screen and I think we got it pretty darn close. So nothing's ever perfect, but with the, with the corner correction, with the digital shrink and with the image shift, you can pretty much do what you need to do as long as you mount it and pretty close to the right spot to be honest. And that's the great thing about it is that because I have my actual projector mounted, so here's the center of my screen 
and my projector is actually up here, probably from your side where you're looking at the screen, about three to almost four feet to the right of where I'm standing here. So that's why you see right here, you'll see the projector on my face stand right here, but it's basically the horizontal shift as well that I've showed you previously. Um, so there's really, really cool options to this and i um, really liking the adjustment and all the alterations that you can make with this projector. So that's a really, really cool option. So let's see if we can pull up the image now. I'm gonna pull up a golf simulator. Uh, we'll probably put on GS Pro, which is one that allows us to use in 4K, which is gonna be great. I'll show you that image and uh, we'll take a look and see. We'll go through some of the different modes as well. Um, again, specifically the golf mode and then most likely the presentation mode to see the difference between the two. We can do a little side-by-side -side comparison of that for you at home. All right, so we have GS Pro up on the screen. I've kicked off all the lights here in the studio, except for this one, of course, just so you can see me really quickly. But we're gonna turn off everything, and I want to show you the image, and specifically between two settings, because I'd like your opinion at home as well. So we're looking at Innisbrook Golf Club here on GS Pro. This is in 4K, everything's in 4K resolution. Everything looks incredible. There's two modes that I specifically want to do a side-by-side -side on for you at home and get your input. And some of this may be me having to adjust some of the settings as well. I am partially colorblind, just so you're aware. So I have issues with greens and reds and some other colors. Um, so I'd like your opinion at home. And I wanna show you two modes. So first what you're seeing here is what they call the golf mode. This is specifically for golf simulators. And this is supposed to be set up for golf simulator programs. They've tested all the different colors and what we're looking at specifically is going to be the greens and the blues. And that's supposed to show up well. So two settings I wanna try. One is absolutely pitch dark, like what you see here. The only light I ever use in my simulator is gonna be a spotlight that will be on the floor and everything else is pretty dark in my sim. And that's just so I can see the ball. I'm also gonna kick on the lights for you at home as well. And let's go ahead and kick on the lights. And I don't wanna drown the image out but this would be kind of similar to how it would be with the lights on. And again, obviously on camera, maybe a little bit different, but it still looks pretty clear to me here. All right, let's kick the lights back off again. And there you see the setup. And again, this is going to be the golf mode. And let's go ahead and show you one other mode now, because I just kind of tested them all out and wanted to see the one I think looks the best, and this may be for home theater as well, is going to be picture mode under presentation. And again, this is straight out of the box without me adjusting any colors. So some of it may be me needing to adjust the golf mode colors, and I'll show you how to do that as well. But this is what they call the presentation mode, and I'm gonna back that out now. And to me, it's just obviously, it's a little bit brighter. The golf mode is a little bit darker, and I think that's meant to be that way for certain settings that you might see on the golf course. But this image just blows me away and it's hard probably for you to see it on camera again, but I want to show you, let's turn it on with the lights. And that's kind of to give you an idea on what it looks like with a little bit of lighting and in an actual room, if it's not pitch dark. And again, still, even with some lighting, it's pretty clear, pretty clear image here anyways, that you would be able to see. And then back with it off again. And the presentation mode looks phenomenal. And if we go to settings again, we're looking at brightness, contrast, and sharpness. So it's 50, 50, and 24. And then they have some advanced color settings. So if I change that back one more time to the golf mode, let's put it back on there. We're looking at 50, 50, and 20. And then if I go into advanced color settings, there's a lot of different things that you can tweak. So I'm gonna probably tweak this a little bit, kind of mess around with it, but let me know your thoughts at home between the golf mode and the actual presentation mode. I'm gonna leave it on the golf mode for now. I'm gonna play one hole for you on GS Pro. It's a par three, just so you can see what it looks like. And uh, let's see how we do. All right, so I'm gonna leave it a little bit darker. You may not be able to see my face, but I want you really to see the image. So let's play this par three. It's just on the practice mode. So I'm gonna hit a couple shots for you, let you see what it looks like in the golf mode. And maybe I'll hit one or two in presentation mode as well. So let's see how many greens I can hit here with this contest. All right, we got one out there. Let's see how it goes. A little bit short. All right, 0 for 1. We're going to take three shots on each mode for you at home. Okay, got another one. See if we can hit the green this time. Ooh, a little too strong this time. In between shots. So we got one more shot on golf mode, and then we're going to switch over to presentation mode for you.
All right, I see we hit the green there. All right. Ah, just roll it off the back. Okay, let's switch it up to presentation mode and we'll see what you think of the way that looks as well on camera. All right, so let's go to menu, back to presentation. Let me know what you think of how that looks at home. Oh, a little bit of a looper there. Off the back of the green. Still hitting it too hard. All right, let's see how that goes. Get on there. Get on there. Ah, oh, man. All right, one more. All right, so obviously looks has nothing to do with how I'm hitting the golf ball, but let me know your thoughts. What do you think so far of the presentation versus the golf mode? One more shot. Come back, come back. All right, just right off the back, but overall not too bad. All right, so you saw a little bit of gameplay both on presentation mode and on golf mode now. I went ahead and changed my settings so you can see a little bit brighter. You can be a little bit more washed out in the background just because of the camera setting now. But I'd like to know based upon what you saw, did you like presentation mode or did you like golf mode better? And I'm also gonna get with the people at BenQ, see if I need to make any tweaks to golf mode at all. Um, I like the brightness of the presentation mode personally, but I like that there's options that we can go through based upon your unique setup at home. So we're gonna look into that a little bit more. Um, for now, before we end this video, I also wanna show you a little bit of what TV would look like. Um, I have some 4K, we'll see if I can find anything that would be in 4K right now, but it will at least be in 1080p, which is full HD. So I wanna show you that as well via YouTube TV. Now, I've tried doing this before and gotten flagged on YouTube for trying to show stuff. So I'm gonna do very minimal stuff, but I wanna show you a little bit of what that looks like as well. And again, keeping in mind that this projector is not only geared for golf simulation, but high-end home theater. So we're talking full movie setup, everything at home. This is gonna be something that's gonna fit all of your needs. I may not be able to showcase every single detail of that here in my setup, but it's gonna be a perfect projector for someone who's looking for that dual purpose setup for their projector and what they're gonna use their space for at home as well. All right, again, one more time, I'm gonna kick off the lights. I'm gonna show you YouTube TV, which I have pulled up behind me. I'll try to show you a few different channels and different things just so you can see the actual image quality of TV and movies at home for you. So I'm gonna kick off the lights now. I'll be off the screen. I'm gonna to talk to you through a few of the channels and see what you think at home. All right, so here we are on YouTube TV, and of course we have all the options that we can choose from here. But I want to kind of show you uh, a couple things, so we'll, we'll put it on uh, whatever we can. And I may have to edit this, you know, in post, just if, based upon if they give me a, a flag or not for any kind of copyright infringement. But just kind of want to show you a couple of options and show you a little bit more about the actual picture quality. And it's pretty phenomenal. Everything looks great. Uh, again, what you're going to see most of here, though, is going to be 1080p. Uh, but there are some options that would be 4K. I'll see if I can find any right now that are available. Um, if not, I might be able to show you a little something here in just a moment. But you can kind of get an idea on um, some of your options and what it's going to look like at home. Projector's phenomenal. It's great quality. And uh, you'll get an idea here. Here's a little bit of, of some golf going on. I'll just kind of leave it for you and uh, talk a little bit over it as we go. But... Picture quality is great. You see that the image fits the screen perfect, just exactly the way that we set it up before we got everything going and running. Same exact setup you know, that we had with the, um, with the golf simulator as well. So just to kind of give you an idea on uh, some of the quality, everything looks really, really good. And again, this is not a movie theater screen. This is my golf projector screen. So if anything, with a high quality screen that's meant for movies as well, if you had that option, then uh, you're going to have a ton of different things that you can do that make it even look even better. And here's another movie that's just on TV. Won't give any names or anything away just for any copyright purposes, but everything looks great. Even in 1080p, I'm very happy with the image on the projector. All right, so that's pretty much a wrap for the LK936 ST projector. Let me know any questions that you have at home. I'm looking forward to continuing to showcase the projector moving forward, hopefully here in the studio where we showcase any kind of golf simulator programs that we use or anything technology wise that we're going to be testing out. We'll be using that projector. So I'm looking forward to continuing to use it, uh, figuring out some more things as I continue to get hands on with the projector itself. 
But overall, first impressions and total review, I'm very, very pleased with it. It's a breeze to set up. It's a, so much easier than the other projector I had where I had to use a third-party software to adjust the image on the screen. So 4K resolution um, looks incredible. You know, everything looks great, especially the golf simulator, the actual 4K imaging from any kind of movies or TV shows. I don't think you'll be disappointed with this projector. Let me know if you have questions on it, anything specifically you'd like for me to test for you at home. I wanna be your go-to person and reach out to me anytime if you do at roland at mygaragegolf.com. And of course, if you have questions on anything in our golf simulator, anything that we've tested on the channel, reach out to me anytime. I'm always here, I'm, I answer anyone who emails me. That's my main goal is to get back to you as soon as I can, but I'm here to answer your questions and be your go-to person. So let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you have any questions specifically that you'd like for me to relay to Ben Q, um, I'm happy to do that on your behalf as well. But I couldn't be more pleased with this projector. I know the price point's a little bit higher up there. And again, remember at home, it's more of a higher end projector meant probably for home theater use and golf simulator. But if you just wanted something really killer, even for golf simulator, it's an awesome purchase. And I definitely think you won't regret it because of all the features that it has. I get a lot of people who are looking for projectors and say that under a thousand, fifteen hundred. Unfortunately, some of those just don't do the things uh, that this projector does. Now, again, there is some, some third party software out there that'll help integrate a lot of that stuff, but not without glitches. This thing has been by far the smoothest transition for me to set up, get ready. And as you saw the image behind me, it fit my screen pretty much pretty perfect. I mean, nothing's ever going to fit the entire screen probably without some tweaking, but overall, I'm very, very pleased with it. I think it did a great job and it was really, really easy to use. So, Long enough video as it is, let me know if I can do anything to answer any other questions. If you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. Uh, again, we wanna be growing this channel, continue moving forward. I'll be here moving forward with more videos. So if you have any questions, reach out to me anytime. Until the next time we see you, as always, keep on golfing and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much.